Hello and a very warm welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now I've made many videos on where you can buy property in Italy and get good value for money. One video I made at the end of 2022 focused on the best 10 places to buy property in Italy for the year 2023. And many of you liked this video and found it useful. Now just in case you didn't watch it, the number one position was filled by Turin in the region of Piemonte. But please, if you haven't watched the video, I would highly recommend you do so. Now, I've also done videos on the best locations to buy in particular regions of Italy, and I intend doing a few more of these going forward. But today, I want to focus on what I feel are the worst five places in Italy to buy property. Now, in all of these places, property is very expensive, and in some cases, the locations I think are a bit overrated and of course in particular given the property prices. Now before I reveal my top five please let me know at the end of the video if you agree or disagree and which places you would have put instead. So coming in at number five is the Amalfi Coast. The Amalfi Coast is incredibly beautiful. This stretch of coastline of about 50 kilometers overlooking the Tyrrhenian Sea and the Gulf of Salerno is very popular with tourists. There are so many wonderful towns to see here and you could easily spend two weeks and not feel bored. However, when it comes to property prices, it's a different story altogether. In my favorite spot, Positano, property prices on average are well over 10,000 euros per square meter. And in, although in towns such as Sorrento, Amalfi and Ravello properties are a lot cheaper, you're still looking at around the 6,000 euros per square meter mark. And in even in less popular places like Minori and Maiori, you are looking at 5,000 and 6,000 euros per square meter on average, respectively. So definitely not cheap. Other disadvantages are that if you do decide to buy on the Amalfi Coast, it's not easy to get to the towns, in particular like Positano and Amalfi, outside the tourist season, you will probably have to get the Circum Vesuviana, which can take from Naples Central Station over an hour, and then you have to take a local bus to get to, for example, Positano, which can take another 45 minutes to an hour. Parking is also a nightmare on the Amalfi Coast, and in the winter months, the places are very quiet. Just think, though, on the Riviera dei Cedri in Calabria, which is only about a couple of hours south, you can buy property at a fraction of the price of the Amalfi Coast in places, for example, like Praia Mara, Diamante, and in particular Scalea, which costs less than 1,000 euros per square meter on average, actually well under 1,000 euros per square meter on average. Do consider, too, that in Calabria, being further south, the weather is warmer than Campania, where the Amalfi Coast is. Anyway, coming in at number four is Capri. Now, the island of Capri in the Bay of Naples is famous for its landscape, which is rugged, its blue grotto, its chic hotels, upscale shops, and its expensive restaurants. However, the island is also steeped in history, so there are a number of tourist attractions here as well. Now, considering the island is quite small, around 10.4 square kilometers, there are a lot of churches, 12 churches, seven museums, and several monuments. And what also makes the island attractive is that there are numerous annual events here, including the Capri Art Film Festival and the Capri Hollywood International Film Festival. However, prices on the island are very expensive at an average of nearly 9,000 euros per square meter. And it should be noted that many properties for sale that come on the Capri market will not give you an actual price and will, pro and will state price on request. So it's probable that prices may be even higher than around 9,000 euros per square meter. Now, other reasons for not buying here are that Capri has very little life in the winter. And to get here from Naples, you're going to have to take a ferry, which will take about an hour and 20 minutes, or a hydrofoil, which will take about 40 minutes. So please, by all means, do visit Capri. It's absolutely beautiful. But do not buy property here. Now, coming in at number three, and again, this is a chic place. It is the place of Portofino. Now, located in 
on the Italian Riviera and in the region of Liguria, Portofino is basically a resort for the so-called jet set. It's actually a very small town with only around 380 full-time inhabitants and in an area of only 2.5 square kilometers. Now, there's no doubt Portofino is a lovely coastal town with its colorfully painted buildings on the shoreline and also some noteworthy churches as well and also a 16th century castle. However, many people who visit Portofino are often disappointed by the fact that it's so overpriced, in particular when it comes to restaurants and shops. And, and the nightlife is not amazing here. And it's a nightmare to park as well. Some people even go as far to say that it's overrated and boring. Now, certainly in the winter, it is pretty lifeless and can get cold as well. And real estate prices are insanely expensive here. So we are talking over 10,000 euros per square meter on average. Now, why would you even consider buying here when there are so many other lovely towns and city, cities on the Italian Riviera where property is so much more affordable? Three such places you should consider instead are Imperia, where property prices are on average 2,100 euros per square meter. La Spezia, where property prices are 1,900 euros per square meter. And Genova, where prices are only 1,600 euros per square meter on average, which is really good value when you consider Genova is the capital of Liguria, has many things to do and see. There are beaches nearby. There is a metro system. There's an airport and a, a port as well. Now, coming in at number two is Cortina d'Ampezzo. Now, Cortina d'Ampezzo is a ski resort in the province of Belluno in the Veneto region of Italy with a population of around 5,700. Now, before I give my reasons why I put in second worst place Cortina to buy property, I do first want to look at some positives. Firstly, there's no doubt the ski slopes here are challenging, but this place is not just a great ski resort. The town has a 1,000 year history and there are many attractions here including castles and forts, churches and also museums. There's also a good mixture of people that come here including Americans, Japanese, Koreans, Scandinavians and other Europeans. Now for those who like a quiet nightlife after skiing, Cortina does serve this purpose and it should be noted that Cortina hosted the 1956 Winter Olympics and in 2026 will jointly host with Milan the Winter Olympics and the Winter Paralympics. However, it is difficult to justify property prices, which on average are around 10,500 euros per square meter. Just think you can buy ski, rock, ski resort property in a place like Bansko in Bulgaria for only 600 euros per square meter on average. Now, I'm not saying that you can compare Bansko with Cortina as the latter is far more developed, but on a, on a per square meter basis, Cortina is nearly 20 times more expensive than Bansko. And another major disadvantage is that the nearest, the nearest airports, Venice and Treviso, are both over 135 kilometers away. So it will take you over two hours to get here. But coming in at number one is Forte dei Marmi. Now, with a population of around 7,500, Forte dei Marmi is a seaside town in Tuscany known for its beaches, but also renowned for its luxury tourism. If you like high fashion boutiques, then this could be a good place for you. These are, there's also expensive restaurants and expensive beach clubs. However, there are many reasons why I would never recommend buying property here. The first and foremost is that real estate here is very expensive. On average, property prices can cost around 8,400 euros per square meter, which for a town which is almost unheard of outside Italy is extremely expensive. The second point I want to make is that other than the 18th century fort in the main square, which is not exactly spectacular, there are no real tourist attractions such as beautiful monuments or churches. At least on the Amalfi coast, Portofino, Cortina and Capri, there are churches and other notable tourist landmarks worth visiting, but this is not the case in Forte dei Marmi. Now, another reason not to buy here is that winters are long and sleepy. In other words, it's incredibly boring outside of the summer. And even in summer, it can, the beaches can get really overcrowded. 
and the beach clubs are very expensive here as well. You can easily pay a hundred euros for an umbrella and beach beach chairs on a daily basis. Incredibly expensive. Now, also another reason why I would not buy here is that there are so many better alternatives in in Tuscany. In Luca, for example, property prices are far less expensive at an average of around 2,100 euros per square meter. There are also some great alternatives in Tuscany like Grosseto, Pistoia, Arezzo or Livorno, which has a lovely promenade and beaches and property prices are only 1,970 euros per square meter on average. Anyway, that's it for today. Let me know your thoughts and I shall see you soon on the next video.